Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for giving us the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you because of what he means for every one of us who believes. And we thank you for the revelation you have given us in your word concerning our Savior and Lord. We are asking that day by day as we read and study your word, we will know Jesus more and more in his name. And at all that he has provided, all that he has done, all that Calvary means, all that his blood has provided, we pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal more and more to us in Jesus' name. We are asking, Lord, as we come to your word again today, that you'll grant us fresh understanding, that you'll grant us a heart that will want to determine to understand your word, that will not just pass over your word and thinking we cannot understand. Reveal Christ to us more out of the scriptures. And as we know him more, we will love him more. We will serve him more. And we will receive from him more. But everything he means will be relevant to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. We come once again to study the word of God as we do every week here. As we would have seen, there is so much revealed in the word of God. And the study of the word of God strengthens our faith. The more we understand the word of God, the more solid we are in our conviction. There are things that we get from the word of God by I just simply reading the word of God. And the normal, casual, regular reading of the word of God refreshes us a lot. There are a lot of things we can get on the surface just reading the word of God. It's like in the world in which we live. There are fruits you can get gather, you can collect on the surface on the ground. And the produce or the product of the fruit of the land, you can get quite a lot just by picking the fruit on the ground. Gathering those things superficially on the surface, you may think that is all that is provided. And yet to see there are people that dig into the soil. And then when you dig into the soil, there are some kinds of fruits you receive while you dig a little. And yet to realize the farmers that dig, they may dig out the yam, they may dig out cassava, they may dig out other fruit. They never dig out to the point they get water coming for them. But you see, the well diggers are the people that dig deeper a little more, and now they have the supply of water for the community. And yet, the people that dig even for water, they do not dig enough, they don't dig deep enough to be able to have the minerals hidden in the soil for the riches and for the prosperity of the nation. And it's the same thing when we come to the study of the word of God. 
there are some normal regular blessings you can receive just by casually reading the bible and the average believer reading the bible on his own without too much digging deep into the word can receive some benefit from the reading and personal study of the word but there are some people that uh, come into the word of God and they dig a little deeper and they can have the fruit and they can have the produce and they can have the product out of the word and you will realize that goes beyond my little understanding when I had my quiet time. Our Christian in Minasi Wati wa 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 jile duty a wa lo so jakwe ni nwa wa jile wa wa le se ala ba kwa di a wa so ile to se ye biye ele yo wa yo wikwe ele tu bo jile ju igba ti mo kan ka fura ra mi lo and yet the riches of the kingdom so ba oro i joba na the riches to bless the whole church oro la ti bo kun bo go i jola the riches are to become the spiritual prosperity for the national church for the church in the whole continent for the church in the whole world you cannot get like that you need not to specially get into the world and dig deep and deep and deep enough until you get the minerals, the riches, the resources hidden in the word of God for the people that are equipped to dig into it for the benefit of the rest of the church. <laughs> So jekwe yo jeki bobu agba la ye koni ani to ati ani seku. Iru ele ya ki yi kan ri pa kwe ki a kama wala sa. So ba awa ti wan le wale jen. Ti wan wa ile ye jen. Awa to ti gara wan di lati wa awa jen le. Aru awa be lo le mwa awa wa luma ni to se ye bi ye yi. Lati fi boy jo on loro ni bobu agba ye. That's the reason we come together and we look at these verses of scripture together and try to dig deep into the scriptures for the benefit of the individual or the family of our local church here of our churches all over the nation of churches beyond the nation idi wa niyan to bi je pe ni gbogbo gba la ma nwa sin ti an lakaka lati tubo wa wa jinle ki o ba le je pe a o sa laba pade awon isura ele ti o ja si ibuko fun enikokan fun ebi kokan fun iya ajo wa ni bi fun ijo ni gbogbo orilede yi ati ni ijo wa ni oke okun lohun today we have come to the nice chapter of the hebrews so ni ati wa si ori kesan iwe beru and it is talking about covenants again there is such a lot to say about the covenants that he had not finished everything in chapter 8. Chapter 8 makes us to understand there are two important essential covenants. He calls one the first. He calls the other one the new. The first one, the old. The new one, the better. The first one for Israel. The second one for all believers all over the world. The first one, limited in its provision. The new covenant, unlimited in its provision and promises. The first one mediated through faulty, sinful uh, priesthood. But the second covenant, the last covenant, the latter covenant, the better covenant, the new covenant, through Jesus Christ, the perfect Son of God. The first one had a limited duration. If it was for the time at that time. But the second one is until the end of the age. The first one was established by the blood of animals. But this second one, the new covenant, the better covenant, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The 
first one are to be cancelled. The second one will never be cancelled. The first one at fault. The second one does not have fault. The first one was the ministration of death. This second one is the ministration of life. And then we are told that the promises of this second one, they are, be, they are better promises. And now after he has told us the limitation of the first and the unlimited nature of the second, he now wants to go into chapter 9 and tell us some details about that old covenant. He was writing to the Hebrews Jewish people. You see the Jewish people, they knew they were given that covenant from the Lord. They had already said some things about the old covenant in chapter 8. Some of the things they said would bring worry and confusion in the minds of the people people of uh, the Hebrew race. For example, he had said that that false covenant had some faults. Because of those faults, it had to be taken away so that the second will replace it. The question in their mind, how will a perfect God make an imperfect covenant. He told them that the first one was to be cancelled. How can the God that changes not change the covenant he had made with the children of Israel? He said the first covenant was limited. How can the eternal unlimited God make a limited covenant with his people? And so Paul the apostle writing this, he needed to be able to answer those questions and tell them the reason for the second covenant, for the latter covenant, for the new covenant, the better covenant. Also, they will be reluctant to give up what they had got before. You see those children of Israel, they say, I got it, we got this from the Lord, this old covenant, we got it from the Lord, we are never going to release it for another thing. And therefore, Paul the Apostle needed to still explain further to them and tell them the reasons why the first had to be abandoned so that now the second is established. With illustration, he gave them illustration. He said the first was like a shadow waiting until the substance will arrive. It said the shadow is because there is a sun and it is a sun that casts the shadow but then now the shadow needs to pass away that the substance may be established. Before the substance comes, the shadow is necessary. It's a shadow that makes us to understand there is reality somewhere. There is substance somewhere. And this shadow, every time we see this shadow, there is confidence in us. There is faith in us. We know that the substance is coming. And therefore, the shadow is a necessary a kind of forerunner for the substance that was to come. 
o gidi wa ni bi kan o o jiji ti a sin ri o fi wa lokan bale o nje ka ni gba kele ati igbagbo wi pe daju daju oju lowo nbe ni nbi kan nitori na o jiji se dada gege bi ani ti o la ona fun oju lowo lati wole wa have you seen some of the builders that build these uh, skyscrapers and these uh, magnificent buildings o wa ti ri awon omole ti won ma nwo ti won ma nko ile alawo si fila ele to to bi rabatabi and uh, when they are those who are going to pay they will put things around and those who are going to consult those things the scaffolding you see all the wood you see all the iron you see everything there all that's not the building itself but then the building once the building is finished we don't need the scaffolding anymore all those things are removed because the building has now arrived <laughs> lati le je ran lowo lati je ki a pari leyen awon akabayi gan kon ni le ni gere ti a ba ti yanju ile ti a ba pari re tan a o ni lu awon akabayi mo rara the scaffolding was necessary at its own time awon akabayi ategun yi a ni lo won ni akoko ti look at it from another angle fi ha mi ran wo bayi look at the little little beautiful toys we put in the hands of toddlers of little children iwo wo awon oyin se re bi omo langidi ti a mo fun awon omo ikoko those toys are very important they are very essential in the nursery in the kindergarten all those things are the major part of learning a lesson but you see when those children when they go to maturity and understanding the toys are abandoned because now the reality has arrived ati awon omo ibadagba toju bo awon omo langidi ati awon omo awon nkan se re won yi won o ni lohun re mo tori pe on ju lowo ti re if you now as you are sitting down as adults here if you begin to uh, have uh, maybe the uh, toys of a little car of a cart of something and then you are rolling it on the ground we look at you we we'll say what happened to you you have not come into the new covenant you have not abandoned the old covenant you have not abandoned your toys you are older than that now abandon that reality has now come ka wi pe gege bo se dagba to to ju bo yi ki iru agbalagba bi ti re ko wa mu keke omo de tabi matu omo de ko wa ma yi ko ma wo teli leyin awon eyan o ma we wi pe ki a lo de ba agbalagba rugu ara to tun fi agbalagba jamuda nigba to ba nse run kan ba yen iwo go o ti fi ma je mo lai lai sile nno ma je mo ti to ti de ma bo sinu re and so that's the reason they were told now abandon the old that was the toy that was the kindergarten that was the little little thing they were playing with that was a shadow now the substance has come the reality has come jesus christ the mediator of the new covenant he has now arrived abandon the old and come into the new ni baya wa so fun won wi pe gbogbo awon ohun se re yin won yen ti ma je mo lai lai ni fi won sile te ri omo de ni ni baye ma je mo ti tun eleyi ti jesu christ je alari na re o ti de baya ti fi de re mo le ma bo sinu ma je mo but he wanted to tell them that if they remain with the old covenant they were going to be so much limited o wa fe bi ye won gban gba pe to ba je pe ma je mo lai lai ni won si di mo sibe sibe o di won de ni won yo wa that's what we are telling the adults on that so fun awon agba if you keep on counting the stones and counting the sticks of matches before you can add together you will never go far in mathematics so ba je pe ko to se siro wa ka kuta wa ka gi sana tiru agbalagba bi ti re ba tun se be o ni ma we siro daradara if you do not go beyond counting stones counting sticks before you hand before you subtract you will be so limited in your knowledge in your understanding of that science subject to ba je pe o ti kuro ni po pe ka ma ka kuta ka ma ka ji sana ka to sa yo kuro ka to furo papo lai lai o ni le loye ninu ima ijinle are you going to count uh, 1003 plus uh, 3029 ba lo se be ka egberun ati metala ati egbero meta ati merinla nigba to ba fe ka gbogbo re pa when you are when you are sitting by the stone some by the sticks of matches and you are counting and counting you will never go far nigba to ba joko ti ka mo kakuta ka mo ka gi sana o ni le dagba toju bo that's what was telling the old testament people on to so fa we eyan ma je mo lai lai ni if you sit down by the toys oni to ba joko ni bi omo lai if you sit down by the counting of stones so ba joko ti ka mo kakuta if you sit down by the king of animals ka mo pa eran if you sit down by 
by the holy place and the courtyard and the holy of holies. If you see them by the ark of the covenant. If you see them by the tabernacle and the temple built in the old covenant. If you see them on laying hands on the animal before your sins can be forgiven. If you see them by carrying the ark of the covenant to the battlefield before you can find the wall. If you see them by the old covenant rituals and ceremonies, you will never go far in spiritual matters. He said, a new day has arrived. A new covenant has come. Make your transfer immediately. And come into the new covenant. Look at it now from Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 1. As the Lord gives us permission today, we'll go through to verse 14. And there are three points we're going to look at. Number one, service in the sanctuary of the old covenant. Number two, significance of limitations in the old covenant. Number three, salvation through the blood of Christ. Look at number one. Service in the sanctuary of the old covenant. He said then, verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. After the second veil, the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that bordered and the tables of the covenant. And over ye the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Ati lori reni awan kerubu ogo, ti o si jibo iti anu. If you will remember, he had already told the Hebrew people that the old covenant was a shadow waiting for, pointing to the and the arrival of the substance. And many of those uh, Old Testament people and many of the new people in the New Testament who were still holding on to the old covenant, they didn't understand the significance of all the rituals and the ceremonies and all the things they said in the old covenant. They must have been asking, was, does it mean the old covenant had no purpose? Valueless? Of no wars? Oh, so he wanted to tell them it had a purpose. And it was good in its own period. In fact, it tells us in verse 1. He started by saying, Then, he said, At that time, in the time of the old covenant 
then then he said verily assuredly certainly the, the first covenant had ordinances not of human service of divine service he was telling them it was given by God all those services all those ceremonies they were divinely appointed but then he said it was a worldly the Greek says earthly sanctuary that is it was a sanctuary here in the world on earth at that time and therefore the first thing he wanted to emphasize to them that it wasn't the it didn't originate from Moses or from Aaron it was God that gave it to them it had ordinances of divine service and look at it to show you that it was God himself that commanded them that gave it to them in uh, Exodus chapter 25 Exodus chapter 25 let's look at verse 1 and the Lord spake unto Moses saying but you speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering and every man that giveth it willingly with it such shall ye take my offering you see it was appointed by the Lord ordained by the Lord verse 8 let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them that was demanded by God he told them that they should make the sanctuary it wasn't something carnal it wasn't something that they just wanted to do by themselves God commanded it chapter 26 verse 1 of that same exodus moreover thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet with the cherubims of the cunning work that thou shalt make them it won't be as a time was here gonna as a ball look away where Atiti aso alaro atiti elesi aluko atiti ododo ti ohun ti awon kerubu isi olona ni ki iwo ki o si won The Lord demanded that there will be a tabernacle Olorun bere pe ki won ki o pa ago Remember it was an ordination of the Lord an ordinance of the Lord Ati gbangba pe ilana ti idasele idasile Olorun ni Pastati and thou shall rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof which was showed thee in the man he wants to be a gunner, get be a perer. You will see once again here that it was the Lord commanding them, saying that they will make the tabernacle. You know the purpose? Make a sanctuary that I may dwell among you. So that in that local place, anywhere you are there, you know that if you want to meet with the Lord, the Lord will be there to meet with you and he also told them that they will make an ark of the covenant then that ark of the covenant there will be a leech there will be a cover on that cover they will carve angels two angels 
The coming of those angels will be facing one another with their wings stretched, touching one another. And then it says those angels, they will so have them, they'll be looking down on that uh, box, on that uh, thing they were to make like the Ark of the Covenant. He called that lead, that cover, he called it the mercy seed. And then the Ten Commandments were put inside the box, inside the ark. But then he put those angels in between the mercy seat and that ark. And then he said, it is there I will meet with you. Already you can see the limitation there. Because God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. And everywhere, wherever you are, God is everywhere. But at the primary school level, at the kindergarten level, at the time when they were just counting stones and counting sticks, and there was the blood of animals, there was a particular place they must get to before they could meet the Lord. That had to be temporary. It is a new covenant when the reality has come whether now you are in Nigeria or you are in Jerusalem or you are in London or you are in Ghana anywhere you are now whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved but at that time, the limited time, they were to have the tabernacle where God will meet with them. Exodus 26 verse 33. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the touches. Thou shalt make a dam- that thou may, mayest bring in hither within the veil the ark of the testimony and the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy now you can see he's telling them about the compartments about the divisions of the tabernacle it is uh, illustrated to the building in which we are you know that if you are coming from outside there is a fence around you come in through the gate into the compound, into the courtyard. But the tabernacle, that was the situation. There was a courtyard where all the people that were going to make sacrifices, slaughter the animals, shed the blood, they could come into that place where they will be able to do their sacrifice. That was a place where their sins were forgiven. The blood was shed for them. And through the blood that was shed for them, their sins were taken away. They knew that meant redemption. They knew that meant salvation. And behold, the lamp of God which has taken away the sin of the world. That outer court is the shadow pointing to the reality of our salvation in Christ. And then when you come to the tabernacle proper now, the tabernacle proper was like a rectangle. But it's divided into two. The first part you'll get to coming from the outer court is called the holy place. And 
lati agbala lode ibi mima la npe now you can tell holy place when we say something is holy place that's related to holiness nigba ti a ba wa so nipa pe nkan je ibi mima iyan tun ma o nto ka si iwa mima there was a table there a table of showbread a e akoti kan wa ni be akoti afara ni ho the priest will bring 12 loaves of bread on that table of showbread alufa yo wa mu isu akara meji la wa sori akoti fi han yi and they will put that there for the whole week wa si fi si be fun odidi ose kan on the sabbath day they will remove that bread ni ojo saturday wa ku awon akara yi kuro priest were the representatives of the people alufa yi ni asoju awon eyan na they will eat that bread wa je akara yi that sabbath day they will bring in new loaves of bread there ni ojo saturday yi wa tun mu akara totun wole wa every time loaves of bread must be there while they are taking out the one for the old week they will bring in the one for the new week gbogbo igba ni akara si gbodo ma wa ni be te ba ti mu ti atijo lo the priest they did that for many many years many generations they never knew the meaning until Jesus came and said I am the bread of life now that the reality the real bread from heaven has come all the bread you are putting on the table every Sabbath day and removing it all that is not nice anymore that's the bread for the old covenant the bread of the new testament is the bread come from heaven the lord jesus christ if you want to live you will eat of me and live it was in that holy place where they had the censer and they were always burning incense before the Lord did they understand what they were doing? no they couldn't fully understand but you come to the new testament and it tells us that that is a prayer of the saints ascending unto god now jesus has come and now he says we can pray to him everywhere in fact it now says the new covenant pray without ceasing o wa de gba ti jesu wa de ti o wa so fun wa wi pe ele ni adura awon eniyan memo iyan ni pe ni bi kibi ni bi to ba wa o le gbadura ni oruko jesu christi o ti e pa lase fun wa gba gba pe ka ma gbadura ni gba gbogbo lai sin mi at lai sare outer court for their salvation agbala to de fun igbala won the holy place for our sanctification ibi mi ma won fun iso di mi ma wa where you always taking of the bread of life after, after you are sanctified and your heart is always designing the bread of life and your heart is always rising up to God in prayer and there is a link between heaven and earth you are risen from the dead spiritually with Christ you are designing the things that are born in verse 33 we read of the most holy place it's also called the holy of holies it's, it's called the holiest of all you follow outer court for salvation the most the holy place for our sanctification now the most holy that most holy the ordinary priests were not allowed to go there only the high priest God went there once a year there was a veil a thick veil demarcating separating that most holy place from the holy place and nobody in Israel could ever go there do you understand that the children of Israel could have forgiveness they could have salvation bless the Lord oh my soul 
and all that is within me bless his holy name who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases that's in the outer court they could have salvation could they have sanctification oh yes they could have sanctification the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy sin to love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. The sanctification. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall dwell in the holy place? They that have clean hands, salvation, and a pure heart, sanctification. And then you remember Isaiah. He saw the Lord seated in the temple. Me. And a man of unclean leaves. And then the angel flew to him and took a life call from the altar. And and said, this has touched thy leaves. Thy sin is taken away. Thy sin is poured. Yes, they could be sanctified. And the way shall be there. The way of the Lord. It shall be called the highway of holy. The unclean shall not go up therein. But the way fearing men do foolish, they shall not hear therein. Oh, yes, they could be sanctified. The outer court, salvation. The only place, sanctification. Now, the most holy. The holy of holies. The holiest of all. They could not enter. They could not receive the Holy Ghost baptism. Because the reality, the new covenant had not come. And although Moses was desirous, he said if all the people of God could be filled with the Holy Ghost and all of them could be prophets. But it couldn't happen at that time. That was all covenant. And Joel told them, don't bother yourself. You are now in the old covenant. Afterward, later, in the latter days, in the last days, Christ must come first. Do you remember what happened when Jesus died on the cross? The veil that we're talking about separating the holy place from the holy of holies was divided into two making a way that now the New Testament has begun. If you want the Holy Ghost now, go in. It's not just for the high priest once in a year. You can go to the holy of holies now and get into the direct presence of the Almighty God. That's the reason for the most holy place. And they could only get to the holy place, but now at the point of the death of Jesus Christ, the new covenant was established, the veil in the temple was rent into two, and now the way is available for everyone. Now you can enter in. All things are now ready. Now the it was limited, the unlimited now has come. They stayed outside. Now we can come in. Come back to Hebrews chapter 9. Look at verse 2. For there was a tabernacle made. The first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the show and the showbread, which is which is called the sanctuary. 
ati tabili ati akara ifi han gbe wa eyi ti an pe ni ibi mimo they didn't understand oyi oye won that it was just a symbol pe ami lasan ni it was just a tie apere lasan ni the tabernacle itself represented jesus christ agbo fun rara re o nduro fun christi do you realize there was only one door in that tabernacle njo je mo pe ile fun kan lo wa ninu ago na do you know there is only one door that leads to the kingdom of god o wa yi o pe ona kan na lo to ka si ijobo olorun jesus said i am the door I am the way. Anybody that will come to the Father, he will come by me. Yes, so bang back pe emi ni enu ona na, emi ni ona na. Enikeni to bang pete ati wa sodo baba o gbodo pa gba ipase. He said there was a candlestick there. O so pe opa fiti la wa le. What did the candlestick for? O pa fiti la ni ki lo wa fun. It is the light. Ima le ni. Do you remember what Jesus said? O wa na tin ti Jesus. I am the light of the world. He that followed after me will not walk in darkness. O so pe emi ni ma le aye eni to ba nto mi leyin ki yo rin ni he said there is a table and a showbread and jesus christ said your fathers dead the manna in the wilderness and now they are dead i am the bread of life if any man takes of this bread he will live forever yes now you can come and take of the lord jesus christ and you will live forever in verse 3 after the second veil the tab uh, uh, the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all ese iketa ati leyin aso ikelekeji o na ni ago ti an pe ni ibi mimo julo that's what i've been talking to you about what is the one that which had the golden censer ti o ni awo turari wura now he talks about the golden censer there ni be o so ni pa awo awo turari wura represents purity wura ni be o so ni pa iwa fufun and the censer is a container of the incense that will that you offer unto the lord awo turari yen ni o to je pe wa ko turari sinu ti wa biru bo si oluwa he's talking about the purity of jesus christ o so ni pa iwa fufun jesus and it is through him alone now we can pray ni pa se re ni kan ba la le gbadura and we offer our incense of prayer unto the lord through the name of the lord jesus christ as him have turari adura wa so wo si olorun ni pase jesu christ he says and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold o to wa so pe ati akoti majemu ti abi wura boye ka wearing the golden pot which at the manna ninu eyi ti ikoko wura ti o ni manna gbe wa and the rod that bore ati opa aroni ti o ru ni and the tables of the covenant ati awon wa la majemu he comes to that special ark of the covenant the ark of testimony o wa de bi ti akoti majemu na bayi and he tells us that it had the gold golden pot having manna inside it o so fun wa wi pe o ni koko wura ti o ni manna ninu re if you have studied the old testament ti o ba ti ka majemu lai lai da da the testament people they probably could not understand awon eyan majemu lai lai boya oye oye won because you see if you kept that manna overnight it will get rotten worms will be coming out de tori pe manna ti o ba pa mo di ijo keji yo di baje ti o ba ti jade but god told them to keep part of that manna which ordinarily will get spoiled the following day put it in the pot and put it in the ark of the covenant and it was preserved for years many many years without getting back so but manna to je pe te ba bi sile di jokeji yo di baje olorun wa ni ki won fi manna yi kan na sinu akoti eri o si wa ni be fun opolopo odun lai di baje a symbol of jesus christ to come which will, that will never go bad the same yesterday and today and forever apere jesus christ eni ti o wa to je pe yo wa lai di baje okan na la na loni ati titi aye and it contains Aaron's rod that bore Apa Aaroni to ru ditun wa ni be You already you already in the Old Testament O ti ka ninu ma je mo lai lai Children of Israel were arguing Awon mo Israeli won jiyan Who is called of God who is appointed of God Ta jo Olorun pe ta lo Olorun yan ga Who is a singular peculiar one that God has laid his hand upon Ta le nikan na ni patu eni ti Olorun ti gbe owo re le And God said there will be no argument and no murmuring again Olorun wa ni ijiyan adope ko ni sikiko mo That all the elders of the tribe of Israel to for them let them bring their own ya ki awon lori awon mo israel awon mejeje la ki won mu opa won wa let them bring his own role ki aroni na mu opa ti re wa let them write their names on each of those roles as je ki won ko ruko lukuluku wa sara n bayi keep it in the sanctuary till the following day as if it be mimo the ojo keji but in the following day ni ojo keji aaron's rod opa ti aroni at body o ti wa ru di bayi that means there were fruits and things wanting one coming out already iya ni pe awon eso tin tinu re jade bayi out of a rod that 
was not planted. Lori aokpa ele ita ofidi re. Out of the rod that had been cut down. Lori aokpa ele ita ati gelule. It was fresh as if it had not been cut. Oda bi otu tu yo yo bi gita oti gila. The other ones had been cut also, but they died, and there was no life coming to them. Awa yoku ita ati geba kana wati ku iye kako jaja dila ra. And the following day when they came together, no joke ye tibo bawa apora. The first one, the second one, the third one, all of them, they all had died without any fruit, without any life coming up. When they came to Aaron's rod, it was fresh. As if you didn't cut it down. As if it had not died. It had fruit. It had leaves. It had everything. That the rod would have had if it wasn't cut. And then God said, keep that in the covenant. Leave it there perpetually for the children of Israel. They didn't go to plant it. It was not uh, hedged into or bordered into or grabbed into. So, any tree and the fruit remains and the freshness remains I wonder why the children of Israel didn't understand that this was a symbol of Jesus Christ caught down to die but everybody that is caught down and dies like that none of them they don't resurrect but Jesus Christ he came alive from the grave and he was resurrected and the fruit of it we see it on the day of Pentecost. We see the fruit of the healing. We see all the fruit before he died. Everything that was taking place after he had been cut down, he rose again. His name is still working wonders. Everything was pointing to Christ. Christ. <laughs> Agbogbo eran meni ati a ba ge lule to ku be gbogbo wa lo ma nse igbe ti a kiri pa won mo so gba ni ti Jesu Kristi leyin gba ti a ge lule ti a si ku re lojo keta o jinde a wa nre eso re a ri lojo Pentecost a ri eso re laarin awon kefere titi aye titi di sisin yi oruko re sin sise ya nu oye wa oye o aye mi bi oye o se ya awon eyan wa yi in verse 5 over it the in the cherubims the cherubims of glory overshadowing the mercy seat ni ese kan run ati lori re ni awon kerubo ogo ti o si jibo eti anu you see that again the mercy seat o ti tori ti anu le kan si what do we need mercy for kin la ni lu anu fun we deserve judgment we are broken the commandments of the God of the Lord. And the Lord said, if you come to meet me on the basis of the commandment, you are broken the covenant. But the mercy seat is there. He said, I will meet with the children of Israel at the mercy seat. And you know that's pointing to Jesus Christ. It's through him we can have mercy from God. Have you noticed in the writing of the epistles? Grace, peace, mercy be unto you through the Lord Jesus Christ. Is the mercy seat? Look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And so you can see what this passage is telling us. The writer, the inspired writer was saying, no, it wasn't that the old covenant was useless. The thing is, everything in the old covenant was pointing to Jesus Christ to come. And now that Jesus Christ, the reality, the substance has come, drop the shadow, drop the type, drop the symbol, and take the reality. Your husband traveled a long journey. And while he traveled, he left his photograph behind. And he said, Well, you, if you try to forget the way I look, that's my photograph. And every time you'll sit by that photograph, you look at that photograph, 
And every time you look at that photograph, you remember him. So that thing we are right, you are not your correct. And it's far, far away. But the photograph is with you. So that I will write what we do. One day after a long time, Lord, you can let your job go wrong. Your husband arrived. And then your husband came home. While your husband came home, and other people were rejoicing. I want to you. I want you to you. The Gentiles, the people outside, want you rejoicing. I want to you. I want to you. Here you are, the Jews sitting in your room. It was the real man Jew to just come here and there. And the husband has now come. Okay, let's sit here. Wale wale. And you sit. You didn't even show any emotion to welcome him. You were holding the photograph, and you are occupied by the photograph, and you are looking at the photograph, and you are sitting down there. And here is the husband standing in front of you, and your eyes are still glued to the photograph. You are making a terrible mistake. It was the real to just be. Se lo be for to akodani inye lo tejuma akodro wa jure. Oh, tell so ya ya kaka. Oh, kikabo. On to do red le maga. On the photo tin belo wore. As he said, like bata bata lunge. You don't need the old photograph again. Look at your husband in front of you. Be photo si le. Oh, nilo inye ma akodro tin do wa jure. The old covenant was a picture. Magje mo la la ya wora. It was a symbol. Oji akere. And before the new covenant came, before the husband came, they were looking at the photograph. They were looking at the picture. Now the reality has come. Now the husband has come. Abandon the photo. And embrace your husband, and and embrace the reality. Ki ojulo wato de, ki okoto de, awola latin bela rugeta angbe yewo. Nisi si inti ojulo wati se okoti wa deba ye. Ekbe foto si le ke wa di ojulo wati se Christi mo. Well, I needed to spend time on that so you will understand because many people don't understand all these details of the old covenant. Moni lo lati lo okolo kwa koko ni so ni noele itori pe okolo kwa ni oye ento wa no maje mo lana oye wa. Let's now go to point number two very quickly. Eje kawa te te lo si koko. The significance of limitations in the old covenant. Look at it from verse six. Now, when these things were done, so then the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. Talking about what they did at that time, how they went into the first tabernacle. That's the first part, the compartment. Of the tabernacle, but into the second, when the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Why that limitation? Why only once a year? Why only the high priest? Why was it not available and open to everybody else? Look at verse eight. The Holy Ghost. This signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was still yet standing. That is, the place into the holy of holies was still not available to everybody while the old covenant was still in force and while the tabernacle was still reared up. Otuma si pe ona si bimi majulo oni akoti si si le funwa ni wang bati agota kokota bi lanata kokoba si fese mule. Then he tells us in verse 9, which was a figure. For the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. He said it was so limited, it could not even perfect them. Which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until, you see that, imposed on them, not forever, but until the time of reformation. Tiara 
That means then very clearly, if you look at verse 8 and you look at verse 10, it was only for that time and it was a limited thing. But now that reality has come, every limit has been taken out of the way. Look at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, reading from verse 23. It says, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. It said, faith was the one to come. But before faith arrived, we were under the old covenant. We were under the Jewish, they were under the Jewish law. It said, Verse 24, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. You see, all those things in the old covenant, the law, the rituals, the ceremonies, the symbols, the types, they were to lead us to Christ. They were signposts to point to Christ. The signpost is not Christ, but is pointing to Christ. It's like if you are going to the IBTC. When you get to the crossroad at a particular place, you will see right there, IBTC, International Bible Training Center. Then they will draw an arrow. That is symbol. If somebody is going to the IBTC, and then he gets to the crossroad over there, you know the place because you have been there. And then he stands at the at the signpost there. At the signpost there. He stands there. Sunshine, rain, he's standing there. I will say, why are you here? He says, I, as IBTC, I want to be. And I have discovered IBTC. We say, this one is signboard. The IBTC is still in front of you. It is just signboard that you have here. IBTC, he says, no, I don't want to anybody to mislead me. I have seen this sign. I will stay here. And he stays at the signboard there. And you leave him there and you go to the IBTC. The old covenant was symbol. The ark of the covenant was a symbol. The table of showbread was a symbol. All those tabernacle rituals and the lambs and everything they were killing, it was symbol. Pointing to the reality. Pointing to Jesus Christ. Christ. Salvation comes through Christ. Sanctification comes through Christ. Holy Ghost baptism comes through Christ. The riches of the kingdom comes through Christ. Don't stand at the rituals. Don't stand at the signboard. Move on and get to the reality and get to Christ. Therefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring God's son to Christ. That we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. 
Have you noticed what happened? It when you the first time you go, went to the IBTC, you were looking at signboard, looking at signboard, looking at signboard until you got there. What happens today when you are going to the IBTC? The signboards are there, you don't even look at them. Because you know the way now, you just go straight to the IBTC without even looking whether signboard is there or whether signboard is not there. Now we know Christ. Now we have his name. Now we pray in his name. Now we are blessed in his name. We have got into the kingdom through his name. But we need the signboard for. The old covenant is abolished. The new 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 covenant is abolished. The covenant is abolished. The new covenant is abolished. The covenant is established. The covenant is abolished. 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 We are not being told that the way into the holiest has been made open. Now the Holy Ghost is available for you. Now everything in the covenant, in the new covenant, is available for you. Now we are told from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, but a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hand. That is to say, not of this building. So, but nipa ti Christi de bi olori alufa awo rere timbo niti nipa se agoti oto bi ti osi pe juti saju e ti ti akofi o wakpa e yin niti kise ti edai. You see the the mention of another tabernacle now, a more perfect tabernacle. Ori ti awa soni pa agomi ron bayi a soni pa agoti oto bi juti okwe juti. That one has now replaced as Christ. He has now replaced the other earthly carnal physical tabernacle. Ele ilo wa dipo inye Christi. Lo wa dipo agoti ara ti aye to wa ni bani. In verse 12 neither by the blood of goats and cows but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now you see the comparison old covenant the blood of goats the blood of cows now new covenant his own blood he has now entered into the holy place don't misunderstand the holy place we read about in the in the Old Testament, that one was on earth here. Now he now has entered into the holy place that's now heaven in the presence of God. Our having obtained eternal redemption for us. You know, every year they had to make their own sacrifices. Their redemption was temporary. It was limited. It was of a short time. And they had to do that every day of atonement every year. But now he has obtained for us eternal redemption. Verse 13, for if the blood of bulls and of goats and of the ashes of the of an ephah sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. Ati ye wure ti a fi mwa a wan ti a son di mi ma ban son wan di mi ma fun yi wen no ma ara. He's talking about what they did in the Old Testament. He said all that they could do in the Old Testament, all that was was for the purifying and the cleansing and the sanctifying of the flesh external. O so pe, bo bo ti a gbe se ni no ma jye mo lai lai, bo bo wen no ma wan, o wapon yi wen no ma ti a ra lo di a ra ti ta la son. In verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God to purge, not your flesh, your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. 
ti a fi ara ti o fi ara re rubo si olorun leeni aba won yo we ki wa sara nikan o e ri okan yin mo kuro ninu oku ise lati ma sin olorun alaye he said it was external in the old covenant it is internal in the new covenant o so pe to di ara ni ninu ma je mo lai lai sugbon tinu ni bayi ninu ma je mo tuntun therefore something better has been given to all ni tori na on to dara julo lati fi fun wa jesus has made a way to come to right to the presence of god now yesu ti wa la na lati wa si waju olorun ta ara bayi look at chapter 10 of hebrews verse 19 wo ri ke wa e beru ese ikokan ni logo having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of jesus ara nje bi ati ni igboya lati wo inu ibi mimo nipa eje jesus the old covenant people not everybody could even enter ninu ma je mo lai lai ki se gbogbo mu tun mu wa lo le wole only the high priest could enter there once in a year o lori alufa ni kan lo le wo be le kan lodun because that was the place that had the shekana glory of god and the fire that was burning every time and the only that high priest could go there once a year nitori pe ni be ni ogo mimo olorun to ga ju lowo ati na to njo that was the very presence and the very indication the very evidence of the mighty power of God and now he says although Aaron and the high priest will go there once a year timidly and fearing we now there is no fear because Jesus has made a way with boldness we enter into the holiest teru jeje tojo tojo ti wa riri ni won fi won be lo le kan lodun sugbon ni bayi o jesus ti la na gba ya wu fun gbogbo wa lati fi igbo ya wo lo si bi mimo in verse 20 he says by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh ni ese ogun nipa ona tuntun ati ti aye ti o ya si mimo fun wa ati lati koja aso ikile ni eyi ni ni ara re that means now what was not available for them in the old covenant is available for us in the new covenant ele lo wa ti mo si pe o nti a ko fi fun wa ninu ma je mu lai lai ni ati wa fi fun wa ninu ma je mu ti so chapter 13 verse 20 e be ro ri keta le se ogun now the god of peace that brought up again g from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd and uh, of the sheep that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will nje olorun alaafia eni ti o tun mu oluso agotan la ti awon agotan ti inu oku wa nipa eje ma je mu ayeraye ani oluwa wa jesus christ ki o mu yin pe you see it says now through the blood of the everlasting covenant we can be made perfect and now we have unlimited blessing in particular the holy ghost that was not available to them is now available to all in john chapter 7 verse 37 in the last day that great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried saying if any man says let him come unto me and drink he said if any man says it's not available for any man every man let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water this speak he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive for the holy ghost was not yet given because that jesus was not yet glorified so ba o so eyi ni ti emi ti awon ti o gba gbo mbo wa gba nitori akoti fi emi mimo fun ni nitori akoti se jesus logo but now jesus has been glorified so bani baya ti jesus se jesus logo everything is now available for us o gbogbo ti wa ni arowo to wa bayi leave the shadows come to the substance ki o jiji sile wa si ojulowo gan leave the picture come to the perfect one fi awon sile wa si odo eni pipe leave the rituals and come to reality fi aye ye sile wa si nu ojulowo gan leave the limitations of the old covenant and come to the unlimited resources and riches of the new covenant ki o ji won ma je 
mu lai lai ati aye ye re sile ki o wa wa sinu ilode won ma je mu ti do the old testament people timidly approaching god ma se ma sojo tabi ko ma beru awon eniya ma je mu lai lati ban tolorun mo no more giving us the spirit of fear of timidity he has given us the spirit that is of a sound mind and love and power ko fun wa ni emi eru ma ta bi ma beru sin gba ni sese yi o ti fun wa ni emi ife ati agbara ni no re we don't need a human high priest now to represent us before god every believer is now a priest in the sight of the lord a ko ni lo alufa tabi olori alufa kankan mo lati ma soju wa ni waju olorun ni bayi gogo ni gbagbo ni alufa fun olorun in the time of elijah there was only one single elijah that could do what he did ni akoko elijah elijah kan soso na ni be lati sin to sin ye now every one of us if you want to be you can be like elijah so gba gogo wa bayi to ba fe di elijah fun olorun o le de elijah you can now pray more than all those other people pray o le gbadura ju bi awon eyan wa ye se gbadura lo the gate is now open for you why are you outside why are you suffering why are you having guilt why are your sins not taking away why are you not ready for heaven anybody that wants to enter can now enter whosoever now shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved and whatsoever now you ask in the name of Jesus he will do in fact now he that believes in me the works I do now he shall do and greater works than this shall he do because I go to the Father there is, there is no limit anymore there is no fear anymore you are not sitting by the shadow anymore you are not looking at rituals anymore you are not killing animals anymore you are not going to a physical tabernacle anymore you can now enter into the holy of holies by the blood of the Lamb what a privilege what a promise what resources we have in the Lord what a great promise he has given unto us all things are now available for you why will you be suffering as if you are like an orphan all your sins can be forgiven your heart can be cleansed and purified you can be baptized in the Holy Ghost you can have the gifts of the Spirit you can serve the Lord without limitation you can live your life without fear you can approach directly to the presence of God you can claim the promises that all testament people did not have you can be a miracle yourself and a miracle worker you can be an instrument in the hand of God the fire fire of God can be burning in your heart he can make your body now the temple the tabernacle he can live in you now and make you the holy place he can be walking in you and talking in you now he can be me now the light and the fire even through you now the shekana glory of God is no more in the temple or that is made with hand it is now resident in you God is not no more saying I'm dwelling in the physical tabernacle God is not saying I will live in you I will dwell in you I will walk in you I will move in you you can be a tarot to the devil now you are no more a slave under the old covenant you are now a child of God you are a son you are a daughter you are the promises of God now you can enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus not only to enter into a holy life you can enter into the holiest of all by the blood of the Lamb what's the limitation of your life throw away the limitations of the old covenant and come into the unlimited resources of the new covenant